that will help them become a good Muslim. So this is like the religious internet hotline or something. They they write in from around the world different you know religious questions, but they tell me that one of the most frequently asked is about you know love questions basically. So we're gonna see if we can get some info. So they get about 4,000 requests every month, and 60% of this is about the most important question, right? <laughs> okay. So, for instance, this one here, they asked me, can you please let me know the dates of do's and don'ts to make love and sexual intercourse? That's what they're saying. What, what's the answer, basically? On this specific request, the exact question is this. Can one make love during the menstrual period, and that according to Sharia law? And is the week after the period is over the best time to conceive a child? We get a lot of questions concerning illicit relationships between men and women, either before or after marriage. We usually have no difficulty answering these questions. <laughs> so here's another interesting question. Marriage, is masturbation allowed in Islam? Uh, a few minutes away from the neighborhood mosque, a sewing factory where some 50 practicing Muslim women work for the Qadir brothers. At first glance, the setup doesn't seem very Muslim to me. I'm tempted to turn the brothers in to Mufti Naim. S&M gear for sex shops of Europe and America are made here. This business brings in over a million dollars a year. Amazing. So, but I mean, come on, this is a little bit of cultural revolution for, for you guys also, yeah? to be able to do this in, 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 yes. in Pakistan. I mean, yes. Yes. Yeah. We just started. We, were, we are the first one in Pakistan. Pakistan who introduced such things here. Yeah. I mean, even the even manufacturer. Even so show me a little bit what's... The straight jacket? The straight jacket. It's called the straight jacket. I think you heard Maybe about this? No. no, it's yeah, the straight jacket. I'll, I'll try it. Okay. Yes. I must say I've never done this before on a story. Okay. It's a bondage, right? Yeah. You have bondage bags also? Bondage bags? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you put people in bags? Yeah. Yes. What is that? Sex. Do we have? Do we have? No, no. How, how do you get your, your references? How do you uh, how do you find your models? How do you know what's the new trend? I mean, this is clearly. <laughs> He went to the dungeons in UK. Oh, in UK. He yeah. has seen. He has seen the things right there. He has discussed with mistresses. But honestly, the first time that you went to a dungeon or something, how did oh, you? It was scary. It's scary. It, it was. was uh, I was never used to it, and uh, because in this part of our world, you yeah, cannot yeah, see things yeah, like yeah. that. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, mistresses are now our customers in the US yeah. and in the UK. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The professional mistresses are our clients. They buy things from us mm -hmm. and they send to their customers. To their customers. These are the myths. Oh, yeah. And these, these are the party masks, fetish party masks. Fetish party. Cat masks. And this is some exclusive product, the dog hood. The dog hood? With a gag. We will, we will give you for a souvenir. Yes, oh, sorry. and you, you put it, it, that goes on a dog? Oh, no, it goes no, on. No, it's not a dog. It's a role play. Role play. It's role a role, play. role play. Yeah. So this is not for dogs, it's for people. It's for yeah, people. Yeah, it's for people. It's for people. But was it difficult to get women to uh, Pakistan to work like no, this on no, these no, products? No, 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 not at all, not at all, yes, not at all. But to work on these products, were they not shocked or... But uh, they don't know, actually, I think uh, that uh, they are using sex products. They just yeah. come and just make the things. Make the things. Yeah, what, what, what is making. But they are, they are interested in their, in their uh, I mean... Uh, as long as they are not they're using it. So, they are least yeah. bothered. They are least bothered. As long as they are not using it. Yeah, that's it. It's a Good answer. Okay. So, I mean, you guys are Muslim, right? Yes. Is this like not against your 
principles or something? No, no, it's not. It's not our against principles. It's our work. We got the orders from abroad, and we just make it. But here in Pakistan, religion has a very strong presence or weight. No. Yes, but but as far as my knowledge of religion is concerned, no religion in the world just uh, stops someone. In making, yeah. in making something. In making something, like, manufacturing it's something. It's not a business. It's, it's just a bread and milk for everybody. Karachi's beaches. Miles and miles of beaches. So it's not really Cancun, even if families flock together to enjoy the surf. But at night, if you know where to go, Things can start looking like Malibu Beach. <laughs> okay, listen guys, it's a Saturday night in Karachi, and uh, basically when you're 20 years old and you want to party, you come to this place. We're on the edge of the ocean, it's about 85 degrees, but you can't really party in the city, you know, you can't really drink alcohol or mingle with women as much as you would want to. So anyway, this is where people come, right here. After the hanky spanky, the whiskey flows easy. Clearly, we're far from Pakistan's age old cliches. Unfortunately, at a state level, at public level, we don't want to, you know, the problem in Pakistan is um, democracy. So it was all right to do whatever you do, you do in, your, in your house, but you know, you can't sort of go out and be your normal self. So that's what gave birth to the holier than thou syndrome. So everybody had to prove to, the, uh, to others that we are holier than you. So I think, uh, yeah, as I said, Pakistan rocks. Pakistan rocks. By the way, my new buddy at this party is Ali, and he knows all the tricks. How do you do it? What's your secret? What do you do for a living? Well, I work for television. I'm, 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 I'm like you, after like you. Can I come and see one of your shows? You don't have to ask, darling. You're in Pakistan. I can just Please, do it? you can just do it. Just like, come anytime you like it. The next day, I show up. And sure enough, so does Ali, but with a better shave. Welcome to the Begum Ali Show. Contrary to what you may think, this isn't a comedy program. It's Pakistan's favorite political show. The guests are serious and the questions even more so. Ali's got 30 million viewers, ratings to die for. Uh, my first guest really is an accomplished lady. You being a deputy, would you please explain to me the difference between the parliament now and as it was 20 years ago? What has changed? God, this is absolutely amazing, Madame. <laughs> And that's Diego. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. But 
Oh, th this is just amazing that on Pakistani TV you have a man dressed as a woman who does the interviews. Yes, I mean, how? Yes. Actually, I think we're a very understanding society. Uh -huh. And uh, people uh, in, the, in the world that look at Pakistan tend to have very stereotyped images of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think of Pakistan, you think of mullahs, you think of Taliban, you think of these things. I mean, you don't think of a woman, you know, I mean, a man dressed as a woman presenting a TV show on all of national television, no? And it's a very popular show as well. Lately, Ali's been practicing in hopes of one day interviewing France's new glamorous first lady. Yeah, Carla Bruni. Carla Bruni. Carla Bruni. <laughs> Over the years, Ali has received a who's who of Pakistan's elite. From business leaders to movie stars, Ali's interviewed them all. But did you, were, were you ever afraid uh, for your life? Were you ever afraid that the mullahs would come after you? you know, were you ever uh, afraid? You know, uh, Diego, when I, well, I love your name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> when I started my show, I had many people call me up, um, you know, old friends, who called and said, are you crazy? Ali, of course, they remember me by my Yeah, yeah, your real name. name. So they called me and they said, Ali, are you crazy? You be, uh, have you forgotten that we live in a country called Pakistan? You know, these people will not let you live here. You will not be able to walk out of your house. People will make fun of you. People will, you know, I'm all, and of course, these were people who were concerned about my security. So are you defending the rights of women, of gays, of men? What, what, what are you helping to do you here? You know, actually, I think all these, uh, you know, lovely uh, words that you've invented in the West, words like homosexuals or gays or straights or this or that and all, you know, they're not applicable in my country, in my society. Because the problem here, problems here are much, much different. Nobody's worried about gay rights in Pakistan. Nobody worried about lesbian rights in Pakistan. Uh, or, you know, the problem in Pakistan is that every year thousands and thousands of people die in terrorist attacks, in suicide bombings, and, you know, things like that. There's price hike, there's lack of education. There's... So our issues are much, much larger. We don't have the luxury to go into such minute little things. Well, listen, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you and, so uh, much. You know, really, good thank luck you so with much. It. We must have dinner together now. Come. Absolutely, let's go have dinner. <laughs> okay, okay, cut, cut. Jose, We're having dinner together. Listen, Jose, look for I hope you... Okay, come.